you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the uh, London Film Festival for having me here in this film. Look at the uh, look at this trapdoor. That's you know, not the place to stand. Um, this is a great cinema. There's look at all these seats. So comfortable. We'll recline. About to go to sleep. Perfect environment. It's like a big aeroplane. Um, I'm going to introduce some people to the stage. Um, oh, welcome out there. You're late. I'll just recap what I said. I, I made a joke about how this is like an airplane in here. And, uh, <laughs> okay. um, so, I have to read this because I don't know the names of the actors in the movie. Uh, <laughs> I make a film and then I block it out. <laughs> Who wants to remember that stuff? Names of people that helped you make a movie. Okay, at this time. Uh, please welcome to the stage the uh, great Roman Griffin Davis. <laughs> the place Joey Griffin. And uh, Thomas and McKenzie. The fabulous Archie Yates. Oh wow, Alfie Allen's in this? Sam Hager and the producer of the film by my dearest friend, Kathy Neal. Um, Scarlett and Sam couldn't be here. We had a dress rehearsal earlier and they fell down through there and were eaten by crocodiles. So they're gone. Um, I'm going to quickly just give a couple of shout outs to Kevin Van Thompson, the executive producer, and Des Hamilton, the casting director, who are here. I've got a question for you. Okay, good. Can I? Can you talk a little bit about um, coming to Christine Leone's book, Cave in the Skies, and, and what brought you to the book, and why you knew you wanted to adapt it into Jojo Rabbit? I'll do a Q and A before the film. Um, uh, so my mum was reading this book in 2010, and she was telling me about it. And I thought, oh, yes, that sounds like that could be a good movie, and I read it, and turns out she was right. And I went and wrote the script. I've got so many good stories like this. And then made a movie out of it. Um, <laughs> well, the thing that struck me, and I, it was 2010. It was actually 20 years after the Bosnian conflict. And, I, and when I was a teenager and that, that was happening, in, you know, I was in New Zealand. And for me, that was just the, that war on the TV. I didn't really know where it was or anything. So 20 years later, I decided I'd to read about it. I read about a lot of the atrocities that were happening. And it struck me that, that you know, there was a lot of stuff happening in front of children and then you know, children were being subjected to. And, and I, I guess I sort of felt like in the 100 or 200 wars since World War II, uh, that has been repeated and we're uh, repeating ourselves again and again. And um, I really felt like I've never seen I've never really thought about what children see, or you know, I've seen war truly through the you know, the lens of or the POV of kids, uh, because you know we as grown-ups uh, we are charged with the, the duty of being the uh, you know, the caretakers of children's futures. We're reliable. We're you know we're the ones who who they can you know we that they look up to for guidance, and then often we appear to be lunatics to them. And we are, and then when war happens, you know, it completely descends into some sort of absurd circus. And so, you know, if, if kids are watching that, then I guess the question I ask myself is what hope is there that, you know, for them, what hope do they hold that they're gonna grow up and, you know, into a, a, a stable environment when they're, uh, the people that they, uh, hoping to emulate, uh, acting like idiots. Roman, question for you. This is your first film, it's such an impressive performance. Thank you. But I want to know what, what kind of advice did the other actors and Taika give you when you were, or when you were coming to the feature? Uh, okay, um, so this is some of my right now. 
I'm terrible at holding mic. It's like, I don't know, it's just the most stupid thing. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> no, they, they kind of, I mean, Tiger talk. I'll just hold it. Okay, I'll give you the <laughs> No, um, I mean, Tiger here taught me about life and energy on set, and he's a musician, and you know, he's a musician. <laughs> No, but I, I, I kind of, no, they did teach me a lot and they did make me feel kind of, I didn't, never felt less than or they always encouraged me and made me feel welcome. They never really felt like work, which is, I guess, is a bit weird now I think about that. But, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but they, they did teach me a lot. They taught me to never, never feel, never do more than you need to do. <laughs> Get out of here. You're drunk. Come back, come back. I'm sorry, he's drunk again. Go. So Archie, I wanted to go to you because it because it follows on so nicely. It looks like you guys had a lot of fun making the film, you and Roman and, and you and the other kids. Can you talk about that? Was it? Yeah, Open. it was like, Get out of the way, please. I'm trying to look at the woman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> We had, ever, right from the get-go, we had lots of fun, me and Roman. We got on straight away, and in real life, in the film, we just became best friends. Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> what was the most fun scene that you guys did together? The most fun scene for me was probably a uh, really demonic scene, no spoilers, sorry, for everyone who hasn't watched the film. I am terribly sorry. That's Please it. forgive me. That's okay, that's okay. I'll take it back. It's a, it's a scene Get the where... The... <laughs> take him out, get him out. Take the shot. Thomas, let's straight to you. Thomas, what was it that made you want to play Elsa and work on this project with Taika? Um, I think the, the main thing for me was that it's this is a story that can never be told too many times because no one can ever be reminded too many times of, of the atrocities and the horrors of the past and, and it's a, it serves as a warning to not let these things happen in the future and to, you know, it, it's... It, I think I, I loved it. It was all from the, the point of view of a young, of a young, innocent eyes, and then for us to understand that young people are constantly observing what's going on around them and absorbing things and taking everything in, and it's a reminder to the older generations and to any, anybody that you got to think about the message you're putting out there, and you got to think about you know spreading love, not hate. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think there was a Guardian about a year ago that put out um, the, the results of the survey which showed that 41% um, of Americans and 66% of American millennials uh, never heard of Auschwitz. And, um, and so that was, I found quite shocking and quite frankly not good enough. <laughs> and so again, just to, you know, to what Thompson was saying, it is, it, I, I, you know, Yes, it's a World War II film, and yes, it happened a long time ago, but it's, we are, if we're forgetting that, then, um, yeah, we need to do more work, and I think we need to continue, as you say, the conversation. Well, congratulations to you all. It's an absolutely beautiful film, and uh, it's great to have you here in London. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone.